and the tongue must be strong enough to overpower the force of eruption because we see open bites in brachyfacial patterns. A square, short face is no guarantee that you won't have an open bite. Now when the o open bite is in a dolicofacial pattern, then people call it a skeletal open bite, usually meaning that it's a long face only. But we also see closed bites in long faces. A long face is no guarantee that you won't have a closed bite. So again, we come back to the oral environment and the conditions of swallowing. Now I'm going to describe to you the normal swallow. First of all, you take a bolus of food into the mouth. Even if it's an empty mouth, you have saliva. And usually in the initial act of swallowing, the teeth are brought together and the tongue is actually pulled backward and the soft palate is sealed. Now once it's pulled into the, in, out of the vestibule, through the teeth, into the chamber, above the tongue, between the tongue and the palate, it's placed in position and the tongue is lowered. And the tongue then moves the bolus, squeezing it up against the palate. Now, for this to take place, the higher bone moves upward and forward. Sit upright. With your finger right here, see what happens when you swallow. Notice it comes up. Notice that that whole point moves up, upward and forward. Now what that does is to bring the larynx forward also. It has to open up the esophagus. This is the posterior throat wall and this is the epiglottis. My hand is the front of the hard bone and the thyroid cartilage. What happens is this stays till. This comes up here like this the epiglottis doesn't move so that in that act when the bolus is going down so the esophagus can receive the food. Now, in tongue thrust we have an opposite action in the initial stages. Instead of the tongue coming up later the tongue is raised and put between the teeth. Now put your tongue between your teeth and swallow. Notice how much further it has to move now. Put your tongue between your teeth. Now try to swallow. Notice you've already raised it once. Now it has, to, in order to swallow, it has to come that much further. So we see that the hyoid bone making a circle. In this act. And it's been the most popular movie in the history of UCLA Library. I can't believe it, but still after 30 years, it is one of the most popular requested films at the UCLA Film Library. You get a chance to see what I looked like 30 years ago, and I haven't changed a bit. <laughs> okay, now there are three types of abnormal swallows. The first I called habitual. Habitual in the sense that the posture of the tongue is wrong at the very start. The tongue has an atavistic tendency. In other words, at the embryologic level, the tongue is up in the mouth. And it never has descended normally. So that's what we mean by atavistic. Now, in the habitual case, the tongue is always between the teeth. Very frequently, the lower teeth are spaced because like a piece of meat, it's lying there over the lower incisors. When you first see these patients, you think they have a large tongue, but the high bone is high and all of the tongue is up in here. A part of the problem first is to get the tongue normally postured and by bringing the tongue down, the front of the tongue goes back. So the first objective in this kind of a situation is to lower the tongue. That is the atavistic type or the habitual type. I sometimes have to explain to the patient how they can lower the tongue as a starting position. It's difficult for them. On what occasion does the hyoid move down the maximum? If 
if you've had too much to drink, <laughs> you're going to vomit. When you vomit, you have to open up. Every child is gagged. So I give them a gagging exercise. The antithesis of that is what I call the glossoptosis type, or the trans transitory tongue thruster as contrasted to the habitual type. What does the word transitory mean? It's a thrust, but it... Now these type of people have a wide freeway space and oddly enough have a very low tongue position. Instead of being at three and a half, the tongue will be down between four and five sometimes. Now, when the patient swallows, therefore, the tongue comes up with a rush. And since the patient has a wide freeway space, rather than bothering to close the jaw, they will fill the space with the tongue. The problem in this type of case is to elevate the tongue for the starting position. The starting position is at fault in both cases. One is too high and the tongue's too forward, one's too low and the tongue's too far back. The latter, however, is usually combined with crowding in the lower incisors. And instead of lying low against the front teeth, it comes up over the top of the front teeth. And these are the type of cases that you see with a tongue thrust swallow. You see it, all you need to do is look outside. Now both of those seem to be basic types. And both of them have habits. In the sense that that is their chronic motor pattern. And sometimes it takes a lot of attention and a lot of effort on the part of the patient to change that motor pattern. Now, the third type is what I call adaptive or secondary. Now, if I have a large tonsil, my tongue can't be in the same place as a tonsil is. Therefore, I have to move the tongue to gain space for the tonsil. If I have an adenoid or a respiratory obstruction and I have to open my mouth to breathe a lot, then nature conserves her energy by placing the tongue in between the jaws during the act of swallowing. Now, let's say that I am a child that I suck my thumb in an ordinate amount of time. I prevent the teeth from coming in and I direct the teeth just like an orthodontic appliance. I will direct the teeth forward. In fact, it's my opinion that the whole palate can be altered with, tongue th with thumb sucking. Now, with the open bite present, again, it's a part of nature to make it as easy and function as possible. So when the thumb is out, the tongue comes in. So it's a continuum. We call that an adaptive type. All right? Now, let me give you what I call a one, two, three exercise. This is something that I use routinely in open bite situations, particularly along the middle to the end of treatment. Yeah, and it is one type of oral or physical therapy. Okay. All right, the first thing then is to place the tongue behind the lower incisor. If you notice here, this patient's tongue is behind the lower incisor. And it comes right up here. Now a lot of Speech therapists will say that you need to put the tongue at the rugae, put the blade of the tongue up. So what you have to do is to get the front of the tongue down behind the lower front teeth. Because that's what you want to retain. Blade the tongue's up too much, then this is going to push the lower incisors back. What you want to do is to get this part of the tongue, the lower half of the tongue, you want behind the lower front teeth. Now the tongue doesn't have a thin band, it has a broad surface, it's curved. Yeah. So we start out with a half of the tongue behind the lower front teeth. Yeah. Now close. And you see that the front top of the tongue is hitting the cingulum of the upper incisors and the rugae of the mouth. Now, the next thing then is to have the dorsum of the tongue and I will take an explorer 
しかしエクスプローラーを使って。And I'll stick the patient. You feel that? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. All right, now I stick the pallet right at the fovea. Which is located right where the soft pallet comes off the hard pallet. Feel that? Yeah. Feel your tongue again. Yeah. Feel that again. Yeah. All right, now put those two together. Got it? Now that will put the dorsum in the right place. And the patient will have a lot of difficulty doing this because the first thing that they want to do will be to do this. They want to take the tip. Keep the tongue tip down in front. That's number one. Now, number two is to clench and suck. That's two. Clench and suck because the patient is not used to holding the teeth together. So, with the tongue in that position, now clench the teeth. And you tell the patient to hold their cheeks and clench. Now go ahead and suck and swallow, maintaining the teeth together throughout the whole act. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. We always assume that because they have a tongue, they have no function. That's not necessarily true at all. Now four is to practice that one minute at a time, 60 seconds. Now you can swallow several several times in 60 seconds, but you do it six times a day, and then one time before you go to sleep. Six minutes a day plus the last minute, just before you go to sleep. You tell yourself, "I'm going to swallow that way all night long." This is called autogenics. In every way, every day, I'm going to be bigger and smarter. I think I can. I think I can. It's absolutely amazing. It is auto hypnosis. Have you ever gone to sleep and said, "I must get up at six o'clock in the morning"? Thirty seconds before it goes off, you wake up. I'm going to wake at 7:03. I'm going to wake at 7:03. 7:03. Right there. Describe it. Go ahead. You. One minute each time. And another one minute before. Going to bed or falling asleep, and wake up at seven o'clock. I had uh, a, a, an oral therapist, a speech therapist, a PhD in my office for several years, and I used to send her a lot of work. And one day, I, I just decided that. It wasn't working as well as I thought it should. There were some techniques that she was using which didn't seem to be in an orthodontic best interest. They have a lot of trouble in teaching speech to get an L. It's one of the last speech sounds that a child will get. And so they do a lot of work on the tongue against the rugae. That wasn't working too good for me. Alfred Paul Rogers described normal deglutition in the 1920s. So going back and reviewing his work is where I got the idea of getting the tongue down in front. So I developed this one, two, three exercise. And I started having patients do it, and suddenly I sent her very few patients. Now the interesting thing is how quickly it works when the patient works at it. 
two weeks. Two lousy weeks is all it takes to see some great progress. They may need a little rehearsal. But don't let them go beyond two weeks. Give them a two week appointment the first time. And you will see results in two weeks. It doesn't take long for muscles to retrain. But give it to them and have them do it for two weeks every day, six times a day and once at night. That's a reminder and a reinforcement. You want to see what two weeks will do? Start swimming a little bit every day. Start swimming. Get in a pool. Go as far as you can go the first day. By the end of two weeks, you're ten times what you went the first day. That's learning your muscles, conditioning your muscles. You're also training the nervous system, aren't you? You're getting this rehearsal here at the brain level. Those pathways are getting established. What you're doing is developing a conditioned reflex. So have faith in it. Now let's talk a little bit about thumb sucking. Oh, we're talking about oral habits. There are different types of sucking. So the first question is, what really are they sucking? Is it a finger? Two fingers? When they suck, do they stick it all the way into the back? Is it like this? Like that, or <laughs> like that. Are they just holding it in there, or are they actively chewing on it? Are they pulling on it? So all thumb sucking isn't the same. How much of the day do they have it in there? Is it just something nocturnal, a little bit to go to sleep with? Or do they sleep with it all night? So a lot of people do not really diagnose thumb, thumb habits. The next thing is, what kind of a facial pattern is it? If it's a class three, thumb sucking might be good for it. <laughs> you got a reverse headgear. <laughs> Honestly. Honestly. Right, but if you got a class two face with high convexity, now you throw a thumb in on top of that. And you've got the convexity worsen. Now the next thing then is the growth pattern. Some patients, as I can show you here, it's amazing what happened in open bites here. A few of them had open bites. Now this is six years of age, 6.73 years. And the deciduous teeth are in there, so the molars and incisors aren't together. So these, there's 13 of them, nine boys and four girls. And it looks, looks almost as if they're class two, some of them. Here they are at 16 years, 0.21. And this is the growth pattern that we saw in this group of children. Look how the chin came forward, and you can see that the bite, the open bite closed, it didn't close all the way. So there's still a little bit of open bite, but look how much it improved with no treatment. The chin came forward. Now let's go to position two, here's position four. And you can see the lower incisor, look at, look at this, the eruption of the lower incisor. So most of the adjustment was made in the lower incisor. Now the oral nomon, practically identical, but changed very little. So there is, it didn't come all the way, but that's a pretty good improvement. With no treatment in 10 years. This is what I was trying to explain to you with a circumferential chain. 
This is a rubber band holding the weight of the head and the cervical column. The mandible and the hyoid. So this is what we're talking about, this circumferential chain that we've been talking about. One system is this horizontal system that I just mentioned. The auricularis oris, buccinator, superior constrictor. The second muscle system working vertically here with the salpingo, the pharyngeous muscle, and the glossopalatinus. As the face grows, these muscles then have a restraint on the denture as the jaws grow. Here's a thumb sucking child and you can see she's pulled her nose off to one side and she's made an imprint in her nose here. Class two, that is a thumb sucker. Notice here the stripping of the lower incisors uh, due to the tension of the lip and trying to get the mouth closed around the thumb. Now keep this patient in mind because I treated her entirely with only two bands. Now here's a couple of golf ball tonsils. I've seen, them, I've seen them so bad that they only have maybe a millimeter or two here. Uh, this is a child like this one. She was a friend of my daughter. Uh, she stayed with us one night I was awakened in the middle of the night with the worst snoring I've ever heard. This is what I talk about with the respiratory obstruction syndrome. There's evidence here with this space between the tongue and the soft palate. Here's the tonsil. Here's the adenoid. This child probably is a mouth breather. And certainly this one is. And I know for certain this one was. A class two with a complete obliteration here. This one has got a wide open pharynx here. See how far Bayesian is from posterior nasal spine. Look at all this adenoid, but despite that there's enough airway space. For many years I had these children swallow with contrast medium. And you can see the tongue between the teeth in this act of swallowing. So I took several of these before and after, but I never had the time to make a study. Look at the size of this tongue. Here's the inferior turbinate. Look at the, the size of these tongues. And look at this adenoid. This is rest position for this child. Look at the amount of freeway that this child has in order to create an oral airway. Here's another one. Look at the tonsil here. These are all environmental problems. Now Linda Aronson did a study. I have a copy of this in your books. In which he took a group of children that had adenoids and had respiratory obstruction and to show that the face was longer. I took these and retraced them and turned them around and superimposed them at PT. Now you see the difference between the faces. What is this case over here? Why am I showing that? Where's the hyoid bone here? Way down there, look. Clear down here. One, two, three, four, five. It's down a level of five. Where's the tip of the tongue? Right there. This is glossoptosis. This patient had a tongue thrust when she swallowed with the tightness of the lower lip. Here's a patient with macroglossia. Here's the hide all the way down here. But look at this whole mouth was full of tongues. It's macroglossia. This patient's tongue was so active, she took this, this tongue trap that I had in here, she just picked it up with her tongue and pulled her molars forward. Look at it. I have the whole treatment of her on a carousel. Maybe we'll, next week we'll, we'll show this case to you. Now this little girl here, I made an enemy out of. I'm very regretful for the, the treatment I gave this girl. I extracted teeth because of her profile, and I tried to get her to get her tongue back. One, two, three, four, four and a half. She couldn't do any better. Notice she is chinless because this is all tongue all the way down here. Where's she going to put her tongue? 
しまってるわけです。そしてこれを読んでいくと、私たちは口の中に口の中に口の中に口の中に口の中に口の中に口の中に口の中に口の中に口の中に口の中に口の中に口の中に口の中に口の中に口の中に口の中に口の中に口And these are tongue thrust cases.、えー、Here is a,、uh, another case that with a small tongue. Here's the tip of the tongue. This is microglossia. Here's a patient with an ankylosed molar. And you see it coming out the bottom of the mandible. But you know the mandible didn't,、uh, an ankylosed teeth, tooth doesn't move. So the mandible is growing up around it. On the arm. Here's the crypt where they're developing third molar. Looks like it's very deep down in the bone.、Uh, we had this extracted, which is surgical removal rather than extraction. This, this proved to me the archaeal growth of the mandible. This is a girl with a lateral open bite. And after two stages of treatment, and Relapsed twice. Very interesting patient. Beautiful blonde little girl. So I closed it up once. It went back. I closed it again. And here it is. I said, You must be doing something. What it is you're doing. Do you chew something on this side? No. You don't hold a pencil there? No. Well, you're doing something. What is it? How do you sleep? Well, I lay on the side. Get on the floor and lay down and show me how you sleep. She slept? No. She slept with the heel of her hand. Notice that she crowded the central. ここれを見ていたら何が起こるかわからない。これは何が起こるかわからない。これは何が起こるかわからない。これは何が起こるかわからない。これは何が起こるかわからない。これは何が起こるかわからない。これは何が起こるかわからない。これは何が起こるかわからない。これは何が起こるかわからない。これは何が起こるかわからない。So she didn't need any more treatment. <laughs> 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 